Hey, hi, hello. Welcome, welcome back. I'm Heather or Ms. Polstoy if you're one of my students and this is Pages with Polstoy. I am so excited because Today is week two in my reading the world. And so last week um, figured out we were doing Indonesia and I started gathering materials and I kind of got started. So here's what I've been up to this week and I've got some cool stuff. I'm really excited. So the first one's a TV show. It's called The Ex Addicts Club and um, it's got about 10 episodes in it. I've watched about four or five of them. It's kind of corny and cute and silly. And the premise is um, it's a group of four or five people who um, are trying to get over their exes. So they are helping each other. They're there to support and to keep each other from going back to these relationships. All of them are a little bit of broken hearted and I'm enjoying it. I like the actors. Um, the second one that I watched was called A Perfect Fit and um, it's a movie again on Netflix. This one reminds me of Hallmark like movies. Very sentimental, sweet, corny, there's a meet cute. What I really enjoyed about it is that it's not American. Like, I really love that you could tell where we were, the cultures were there, clothing, um, the food, nods to religion, some of the things that happened in there. Uh, I really enjoyed that part of it. And it added to the whole like sweet, cute love story that it was. The girl is engaged to someone and um, you can kind of tell the relationship's got some toxic edges to it and she ends up stumbling into a, kind of like a shoe store and the shoemaker is the other main character kind of just click and really cute story that one is a 4.5 4.5 stars. So that was my video, much better than the horror from last week. Ah, okay, so really enjoyed that. Um, the second thing that I've been doing this week is I got my, I got two of the three translated literature that I was looking for. So I was able to kind of narrow down and find a couple different things that I wanted to try. So um, I ordered two books, one of them's not here. So I'm gonna talk about the one that I ordered that is here. And this is called Most, oh, Happy Stories Mostly. Uh, the author is Norman Erickson Pasaribu. I totally messed that up. Translated by Tiffany Sao, Tao. I'm sure I messed that up as well. Um, my apologies. This one was kind of recommended it's short stories, a bunch of short stories in this, their stunning fiction debut. Queer Indonesian writer Norman Erickson Pasaribu blends together speculative fiction, dark absurdism, drawing from Batak and Christian cultural elements. Long listed for the International Booker Prize. Um, the stories, I've read about three of them so far. When it says, happy stories mostly. I haven't got to the happy part. Um, but what you, what I'm finding kind of the theme here is that people dealing with really hard things are doing the best that they can with it. That I can get behind. Some of it is kind of silly absurdism. Um, I like that kind of thing. That's totally my jam. I'm actually really looking forward to it. It's nice and short, so um, won't be overwhelming. However, like if you can see the print, really tiny print, really close together, not a lot of space. So um, I think it's still gonna take me some time. Um, so far so good. So that was one of them. 
this one I'm really excited about and it was at my local library so this is the bird woman's palette it is a novel by Lexmi Pam Jock I am so killing those names so sorry um interestingly enough same translator hmm awesome what I'm really excited about this is that this is books follows um, a woman she's gonna kind of journey through Indonesia she is a she's an epidemiologist I can say that word um, Aruna so she's an epidemiologist and she's dedicated to food and basically avian politics so she's kind of researching the avian flu some some outbreaks that are going on throughout different parts of Indonesia but she's traveling also with her whole foodie like element and so um she's got some friends that are going to come along they are going all over it's the perfect excuse to get away from corrupt and corrosive Jakar jakarta and explore the spices of the far-flung regions of the islands with her three friends a celebrity chef a globe-trotting foodist and her co-worker farish I think it's going to be cute. I'm really excited and I'm hoping it kind of helps me as I'm trying to pick out and um, figure out what I want to cook because I started like really deep diving into the cookbook. I have a couple of ideas of what I want to do there, um, but I'm kind of thinking that I might try and see what happens here and see if that doesn't inspire some of my food things. So looking forward to this one. Um, I hope to start this one this week. So I'm still reading this children's book that's kind of a overview, broad overview of just kind of the pieces and parts of Indonesia, um, talking about um, land, history, um, the different islands, some of the background, that's been really nice, learning about what type of money they have, that kind of thing. It's good. I, I, I want to learn that. <laughs> this is very approachable and not hard. I have not touched the um, history of Indonesia book. Um, nope, stuck with my children's literature. Speaking of, I did finish this one. I, I loved this. I really loved this. So Tuttle Publishing apparently um, does books like this for all kinds of countries in Asia and brings forward basically the culture, the history, the fables, the myths, the fairy tales from all these different cultures. Um, and it is a Indonesian author who wrote kind of revamp the stories to tell them to children. And it's an Indonesian um, illustrator who did the pictures in here. Oh my gosh, guys, I loved this. Really short little ones. I loved this so much that right now we are um, teaching about theme. So we're kind of reviewing theme and having the kids do um, summaries of short stories and that kind of thing. And um, I am actually going to read them one of the stories in here that I'm going to share with you um, that I'm super excited about. So on um, this week, I'm going to actually read this story with my students. And this is The Buffalo's Victory. Um, this is kind of a really important myth. Uh, I think it has some elements of truth to it but it has to do with Minangkabau people. I'm gonna figure out how to say that because I'm sure I mutilated it. They are um, in the highlands of West Sumatra and this is kind of a story um, about how they avoided a war and um, they, to this day, have elements from this story in their culture. So let me just share the story really quickly. Um, hey, so this is Editing Heather popping back in. Um, I'm going to kind of summarize our little myth here. I kind of did some things wrong the first time, and I want to make sure I get everything right. And what we have is, um, in history, a 
the king of Java, one of the places that they tried to take over was this West Sumatra village of the Ming, Minang Kabao people of the West Sumatra Highlands. Um, basically, the king of Java came in, wanted to take over. They, of course, did not want him. They didn't want to have to pay tribute to him. And instead of having a war, proposed that they have a battle between two buffalo. So each group would bring one buffalo to the battle and whichever buffalo won, then either the king of Java would then control them and the um, Sumatra group would have to pay tribute or if their bull won, then the um, Minang Kabao people um, would be free. The king of Java brought in huge buffalo, like, I mean, a beast, a monster, right? And the people of West Sumatra decided we're going to go a different route. And they had a buffalo mother who had just given birth to a calf. Um, and they separated the calf from its mom for several days. And so when it was time for the battle, they put on the calf uh, metal horns basically, to um, help defend itself. So out comes the giant buffalo against this little baby calf. And of course, the king of Java's like, mm, I got this in the bag. You guys are ridiculous, laughing their heads off, right? Only, I mean, wisdom beats it, right? So the calf's super hungry and it sees a buffalo and it hasn't seen a buffalo in a while. So it's going to go and try and get breakfast. So it obviously runs and ends up like gutting the other buffalo. Like it basically annihilates this big, huge monster of a beast because it was hungry. Um, so they won. Yay. And they're free. Yay. This story ties into their architecture, their dress, even today. So I only have an illustration because I was worried about copyright, so I couldn't put up pictures. Um, so you can find the architecture with these peaks in this area today. And um, a lot of times their headdresses you can kind of see in the shape of calf horns. I love these pictures. The illustrator is fantastic. Um, so this is still, you know, a tradition today and it's based off of fairy tale myths and fables. Love that. So, um, back to previous Heather telling you the rest of what I found out about this really cool culture, but it gets better. It, it gets even cooler. Ready? So, um, this group, this tribe, um, so Indonesia is made up of multiple ethnic groups, multiple people all over these islands. It's an archipelago. And so different languages, different cultures, all of the Indonesian people, but with different like systems of belief and that kind of thing. I am messing that up, but this is what I'm learning. Um, so this group, the... Minang Kabao people, um, they are the world's largest matrilineal society, meaning that they don't share the land um, and the, the property from father to son. They pass it mother to daughter. And this is the largest example in the world of this matrilineal society, which is super, super cool, right? Had no idea, learning all this cool stuff. But even cooler, if you're hearing weird noises, it's my cats. Um, even cooler is all of Indonesia, um, their religion is Islam, they're Muslim. And so if you look at examples from around the world, it's not usually um, women who have that kind of like authority and power. And they've balanced it, like they have balanced it. Um, the men are still kind of government, women are still in the home, like the leaders. Like, and if you ask them, um, they even feel like they're equal. So there isn't like one who's better than the other, it's a shared 
it's such a cool, interesting society. I really enjoyed learning about them. So that was kind of one of the coolest discoveries that I've found so far. Every time I, I watch these shows or read these books, I'm getting to know it a little bit more. I'm really excited. I'm glad I'm doing this for four weeks. This is week two. Keep reading. I hope you enjoy what you're doing and have a fantastic week and we'll see you on the other side.